we're squeezing in one more before I hit the road here first thing in the morning but this won't be posted probably till mid later in the week it's kind of nice you can pre-schedule your uploads um, so we're on the final couple cuts of this wall post because when I get home I want it done I want to be ready to stand this thing up when we get back and then my first floor is done I can move on to the second floor but uh, so I'm going to show you guys, uh, you guys have seen me if you watch any of the older videos, you've seen where I use the router sled to cut the housings for my tie beams. Um, it is a, uh, it's an angled housing, so it's, it's a one inch housing at the bottom where the tie, where the bottom of the tie beam sits into the wall post and then it goes to nothing by the time you get to the top of the tie beam. So I'm going to show you guys how I how I do that basically uh, I set up a jig I set up a jig on the beam itself screw it right into the side of it and I'll show you guys how I figure that so here we go a piece of scrap wood here that my boy kind of got a hold of but uh, so when you're cutting this this top part needs to be good and needs to be good and straight because any imperfection in this it's going to show in your router so take your straight edge you know take your frame and square put it over the top where that sled's going to ride and make sure you're good and flat you don't want to see any daylight through that uh, through the body of this frame and square and we have no daylight there so that's excellent and all I do there's nothing very scientific about it but I know that I've got to go from nothing down to one inch so what I do, I just put a line on here, doesn't matter where you go. And I use my little combination square because it's going to ride on this. If I, you know, it just makes it a little more accurate for measurement. So on one end I'm going to come down two inches because that's the depth I'm going to set my uh, three quarter inch router bit. It's going to be two inches. So. I mark that down to two inches. Then I'm going to come down. And this is where your frame and square is so handy for so many things. I know I need 16 inches there. So 16 inches there, that's the length of this tongue on this. Just put a mark. Double check it with your tape measure. That's 16 inches. Just a square line. And this end, I'm going to mark it at one inch. Because by the time I get down to the bottom of this housing, I want that router to bit, bit to be sunk an inch. And just to make it a little bit easier for me to line it up, I'm just going to connect the dots. And the reason that I put that I put the lines here going down is I've got a crosshair on both ends of this, and they should line up with the uh, the marks on the on the wall post here. And then I know where to put these. So when I put this on, well, let's see here. And of course, I got to do one opposite too. So I go to put this on. I'm just going to line up these crosshairs and this line that I drew down through here is going to line up with that but I've got to do this one different I messed this one up <laughs> didn't mess it up I just did them both the same again for reiteration and go down this time I'm going to measure uh, one inch I'm going to use the tongue of my frame and square. And come over my 16 inches. Double check it.
right on the money. Come down two inches. Connect the dots. And there we go. So now I go to put this one on this side. I can just line up my crosshair there. Right on the line. Bring this one down, line that up. Move it where it's got to be here. So now this way, this housing will be perfect across here. One thing you got to keep in mind, if your post or your beams are out of square, you're going to have to adjust where this is because you want this housing needs to be square to the reference face. So I already know this is square, I've already got that figured out, but that's all we do. So we're going to finish cutting the joints on this, on this guy, and then this thing will be done for when I get home. Then maybe on the next one, Maybe we'll be actually standing the final bent and that would be that would be awesome. We can put the very last wall post in the books. She's done. Now I can go on vacation with a clear conscience. So as soon as we get back, uh, I'm going to be back next Monday night, Labor Day. And uh, it's probably going to take me a day or two to get another video out. But when we come back, I'm going to be buttoning up everything for this final bet. And then I'm hoping, I say it all the time, but I'm hoping the week I get back, I'm really hoping to be able to get this thing stood up. The um, fall's hitting, and fall's when I really get a lot done on this project. Um, this will be the second fall since I started standing this frame. Like I said, the first bent went up in November of last year, so the progress has been slow, but that's my own fault. Um, but another fall, I'm really hoping I can uh, tear a hog in the ass and at least get the roof on this thing then I can work on the siding throughout the winter but I am excited very excited to be done with the wall posts so this one we didn't use the chain mortiser um, pretty much uh, didn't get into a lot of how-to detail in the last few videos on this uh, just because if you guys have been watching along for a while there's quite a few videos with some pretty heavy instructional detail on there but uh, Anyhow, I'm not going to take a total vacation because when we're up there in New Hampshire, I've uh, got the shaving horse loaded in the truck. I've got a bunch of peg blanks loaded in the truck. And uh, you know, I'm going to work on making pegs by around the campfire. So, anyhow, I will see you guys when we return. Um, this video is going to be uploaded during the middle of our vacation. I'm going to schedule it to come out. Well, you guys will see it when it comes out. So, anyhow. Have a good evening. I will see you guys on the next one.